Also tonight, Stop the hunt. we look back at the killing of Cecil the lion. Did we overreact? Is social media to blame? Brian May thinks not. Right, the end of the summer holiday is in sight. The so-called silly season is drawing to a close, which makes it a good time to ask whether August is getting sillier than it used to be, particularly in the era of social media. Clearly, Jeremy Corbyn has dominated the news this year, proof enough for some that in the modern era, foolishness is getting to be a serious problem. But, of course, for others, that's no such thing. Now, one of the summer highlights this year, uh, an example of an apparently modest news story that exploded onto all the front pages and was treated as a huge story was Cecil the Lion. What does Cecil tell us? He was a very special lion, with websites dedicated to him and many fans. Although in truth, probably most of us who were upset at his death had never heard of him. He was, though, hunted illegally, baited out of safety, killed and decapitated. And what a reaction there was. Celebrity Twitter condemnation, not a half of it. Walter Palmer, the dentist involved in the hunt, had to go into hiding. Protesters outside his surgery. For the internet, it was Je suis Cecil. When people are sharing news or information or opinions in, in these silos that they dig of sort of mutually reinforcing prejudice, um, it, it's psychologically demonstrated very clearly that any group of people that debates a certain issue or where they broadly agree will gravitate towards a more extreme position. But was all that reaction proportional? After all, hunting kills, what, two lions a day? Most don't get the mourning that you might associate with a deceased king. Now, the conventional wisdom is that social media feasts on stories like these. Outraged reactions howl around the cybersphere in feedback loops that amplify their volume. And there's definitely something in all that. This was a lunch for women journalists and women, particularly women scientists and engineers, actually. Take another Hunt example, Sir Tim Hunt, the scientist who made a silly sexist joke at a conference in Korea back in June. And uh, I'm really sorry that I, I said what I said. It was a very stupid thing to do in the presence of all those journalists. Social media kicked in, hashtag distractingly sexy. That joke turned into a lynching by lunchtime and Sir Tim had lost an honorary academic position that day. It all happens in double quick time now. Here's a funny thing. 10 million people, each with a strongly held private opinion about something, well, that's reasonable. 10 million people all express their view on Twitter at the same time, and you have what looks like an unreasonable collective view. So, yes, social media makes it too easy for an imbalanced crowd to coalesce. And yet, and yet, madness didn't start with social media, as any history of hysteria will tell you. Tulip mania in the 17th century. Fear of communist subversive activities has developed into hysterical frenzy, which grows daily. To McCarthyism in the mid 20th. Certainly do believe that the Communist Party should be outlawed. Act now. To our obsession with the millennium bug at the dawn of the 21st. A collective lack of perspective is nothing new. And anyway, just as crowds can be silly. Can't crowds also be wise? The web can strengthen our prejudices, but it can also show we're not alone in our thoughts. Despite being hounded on Twitter for her campaign to get a woman onto a new British banknote, the journalist Caroline Criado Perez is upbeat. I don't think you can really say that social media is positive or negative. Um, it's just society online with all its problems, but also all its benefits. Um, I think in terms of democracy, in terms of giving people a voice, it has been an incredibly exciting and I would say revolutionary tool, um, the likes of which we haven't seen for a very long time, because it really has opened the doors to, you know, far more people than have been able to have a, a public voice um, than, than has ever really happened. 
For many, Cecil the Lion was a gratuitous overreaction. Could be so, but it could simply be that social media has taught us how many people hate hunting. Social attitudes are being recalibrated against it. When animals are under attack, and social opprobrium has been discovered as a way of restraining the hunters. Well, joining me now, the former Queen guitarist and founder of the Save Me Trust, uh, Brian May, and the Evening Standard columnist, Rosamond Irwin. Thanks both for coming in. Um, Rosamond, your reaction to the reaction to the Cecil the Lion killing? Well, I was glad at first that it was on the front pages. It seemed we were taking a very serious issue and actually putting it in a prominent position. But what I thought was completely disproportionate was that and we started hounding the man. We didn't address the issue in totality. What social media lends itself to, particularly Twitter, with its 140 character limit, it, it became a sort of mob of people saying, this man is sort of the most disgusting human being alive. We must hound him in all sorts of ways. People were calling for him, um, uh, Petta called for him to be hanged on, it, on its Twitter um, profile. Um, uh, Piers Morgan wrote that he, you know, fantasised about skinning him alive. And I think that, and obviously that was for the Mail Online, but that, that something there that social media does is it produces those violent reactions and sort of perpetuates them, and we get this mob building up incredibly quickly. What did you think of the mob, Brian? I object to your tone, actually, and that's why I came in. You, you invited me in. But I, I object to the fact that, for once, the world actually did get up and express its outrage at something which was despicable. And this, I mean, the internet to me is just hearsay. It's just amplified hearsay. There's nothing new here. For once, people got up and said, we don't accept that this is um, the way that people should carry on. And I'm actually disappointed that you take this view that it's something, you know, we have to apologize for. I don't want you minimizing it. I don't want you sanitizing it. This animal was caused to suffer. And it's the tip of a huge iceberg. There are animals everywhere being abused by people at the moment and this opened it up people are now asking the question we may thanks to this have a Cecil's law we should have a Cecil's law which forbids the import of any trophies from any country and we should stop trophy hunting in this country too what about the specific point about the hounding of the man I mean he's not the only hunter is he he was doing I don't like hounding no. anyone to death that's mm. not the I don't think that's decent behavior I can understand people's outrage but this this guy obviously has a wife and a family you know we want to penalize them at the same time if a person commits a crime which I believe he probably did he has to be called to task I mean that's the way the world works he has to be probably and, apprehended and am I taking it that your sort of view about how policy works or social movements work is is that you focus on an example so that there are two lions being killed a day we don't make a fuss about the others but well we you, actually you, do make a well, fuss okay, about, I mean, I generally do. we don't i, I think mean, it you know, applies to yeah. everything as i, mean, right. I think it applies to foxes and badgers and everything you know there are so many animals all around us being abused at the moment and what's wrong is the mentality that tells people, oh, animals don't matter, it doesn't matter, we can abuse them, we can use them, we can experiment on them, we can kill them for fun, for sport. That's all despicable. And I think what happened with this particular thing wasn't conscious for many of us, but it came, it arrived. There was an animal that everybody cared about, and he epitomised what's wrong with our attitude to animals. I think what depresses me about the media reaction is that it takes it becoming, you know, a so-called Twitter storm and finding this one individual to attack for it to move from the middle pages where these stories tend to stick mm. into the front page. So day one of the story was about Cecil the Lion. But mm. by day four, we were going through this man's history. We were looking, you know, we were finding his dental practice. People um, graffitied his home, um, his, his holiday home. And you're, and you're thinking this has all come from something. And, but, and the yeah. venom is so targeted at an individual. And not a, you know, it's very easy to scapegoat a person, but to look more broadly at an industry and an issue You're and a culture. just one side of it, aren't you? I mean, that was one side of it, but the other side of it is that people are conscious and becoming more conscious. People didn't know that these animals were actually bred to be taken pot shots at. I mean, it's disgusting. You know, these animals are bred in captivity. They're shot at in a cage. Sometimes they're drugged so they can't get away. The same as people breed foxes for sport in this country. It's well, I... all despicable. It, it, it needs to change. So I'm sorry about the guy. I think he's probably, you know, I, I'm not to say whether he's guilty or innocent. It looks like he's guilty, mm. so there has to be some kind of punishment but or whatever. That's for the law to do. Absolutely. Isn't it? And, and he but will I wouldn't concentrate get... on that. I would say some good will come of this, and I think social media well, is just like he say, good comes of it, bad comes of it. That is such an interesting contention, isn't it? Because I, I wonder whether you, Rosman, think it, it works. I mean, because it felt to me as though social opprobrium was now applied to that activity. You're never going to see a would be king or a Spanish monarch standing in front of a big mammal that they've killed looking proud, are you? I no, mean, it has just changed the game. but of course these people do, do go and hunt deer and various other things. I'm not mm. equating that necessarily. Changed, 
Uh, I would equate it. Um, I think we... I think that certain people certainly will be aware of it, but I sometimes think Twitter is talking to itself an awful lot. It's people who already agree with one another, supporting each other's views. There's a lot of truth in that, and I yeah. think it was interesting that this broke out of the... I mean, I feel that like I talk to the same people the whole time. It's well, preaching to the converted. You, you, but this actually quiet. broke out. This did... I mean, we, we use Twitter to good effect. You know, we, we galvanised people to care about the fox hunting issue, which is why we narrowly escaped being the first country in the world to bring back a, a blood sport in the 21st century. People cared enough to make a difference, and it was Twitter that did that. It can be abused, of course it can, but it can do a lot of good too. Rosamund, I wonder whether sometimes, I'm a bit torn on this myself, whether reasonableness sometimes doesn't work. If everyone, if, if people didn't overreact sometimes, oh. nothing would ever happen. If we're not going to drive this perfect line between oh. sort of the, the, the right I, side of each other. Yeah, I think there's something in there. I think a lot of good come, can yeah. come from anger. I mean, oh. that's what motivates yeah. people in, in tragedy. But is the same person who tweets that they want to do horrible things to this dentist the same person who then goes away and fights the cause that you are nobly fighting from? I'm not sure they are. I think it's very easy to put your little opinion and then send it out into the world, get everyone to retweet it, and a, a, a month later, are you checking that anybody's doing anything about, you know, conserving animals in the world? I don't know. I mean, I don't think Personally, you are. Personally, I am. You are. You <laughs> myself. <laughs> but I don't know. I want that the to see a change. I want. To, I mean, I was happy to see that some airlines actually took it on themselves to lead by banning uh, the, the transport, the transport of, of, the, of the, these trophies. The I would like to see the prime minister take a lead as well. We could ban tomorrow. There could be a bill to ban the import of trophies. We need it. It could be brought in. The whole country would get behind David Cameron if he decided to do this. Let's see it. Fascinating topic. Thanks both very much. And that uh, is almost it for tonight. We're going to leave you with Adama Sanko, who, and you will like this, is the last patient to be discharged from an Ebola treatment centre in Sierra Leone.